Welcome back, everybody. If you're new, my name's Nicholas, and this is Investing Against the Grain. What a crazy day we just had. So much to talk about. Tesla stock, stock splits, inflation. I, you know, I tried to warn everybody about what was to come. And even though I warned and I talked about everything, I was still so off on everything. So let's discuss what I was wrong about, what everything means for the future, and where we might be next week. Before we get into it, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, and let's get into it. To kick this video off, we are going to dive right into my computer and we're going to look at a few different things. So let's dive in. All right, so we're here looking at my Twitter and we're going to start off just by going down because there's just too much to cover to not really, you know, just do it this way. There's just so much happening. First of all, big news, Farzad. Farzad is starting a cover band. They'll cover the iconic classics like Mary Had a Little Lamb and Hot Cross Buns. So if you guys don't know about Farzad, go check them out. Great channel. Great cover band soon to come. I love you, Farzad. You're great. All right. Um, let's just check this out real quick. New tweet. Incredible day with full self-driving beta today. Drove through a lot of LA traffic with zero takeovers all day. I've been saying this. I tweeted about this this morning. It's unreal the amount of zero takeovers we're seeing, not just from Holmars, but everybody as the FSD beta grows more and more. All right, let's get to the main stuff. All right, Troy Testlight. Check this out. Um, I haven't done a deep dive on this yet. He just posted this about 40 minutes ago. I just got done with a, a team event, so I haven't had time to really dive into this. Uh, this is essentially, they're talking about the battery pack with the 4680 and the new Model Ys coming out of Giga Texas. So there's some stuff to look into that. Like I said, you know, I, I want to dive a little deeper into it before I talk about it. I don't want to speak out of ignorance, especially given what my background is. I should probably, you know, speak with some type of, you know, uh, uh, confidence and engineering prowess, right? You would think. So I'm not one to just say things to say things. So I'll come back to, to talking about this in a future video. But in the meantime, check it out. Troy Teslike has some really good, interesting stuff here. Um, but again, like I said, I want to do my own math. All right. Come down here. This is big news. SEC investigating Goldman Sachs over ESG funds. So this is a pretty big deal, okay? This is literally what we've been talking about. Somehow Tesla gets kicked out of the ESG uh, fund. Right now there's an investigation going on to it. Elon Musk saying that it's essentially a big scam. So we'll see what comes of this, but it's very interesting that that's playing out. Larry Ellison will not seek re-election to Tesla's board of directors. In June uh, 2022, he's on the board of Tesla, and essentially he's not going to re-up or try to stay on the board. Um, I don't think this is that big of a deal at, at the end of the day. Um, you know, he owns about 1%. Uh, actually, oh, look, okay, Sawyer says it. <laughs> they say, you know, this is all stream of consciousness and live because I didn't even know this was going to come up. Uh, so the filing says Larry Ellison currently owns about 1.5% of Tesla shares and Elon Musk owns 23.5%. Um, again, I don't, I don't know what the relevance of that is, but, but the point is I think th they're going to be fine. I mean, it's a board member. Sure, they have some inputs in, in some stuff in general, but in reality, it's the Tesla engineers, it's Elon Musk that really dictate where we are going and what matters. I don't think board seats really, really impact that much. All right. Um, Yashu paging Elon Musk about this uh, SEC for uh, Goldman Sachs, the ESG stuff. Um, okay, here we go. The big news. Breaking from Sawyer Merritt. Would we expect anything else from Sawyer other than a breaking? Tesla has just filed their notice of 2022 annual meeting of stockholders. Tesla is proposing to increase the number of authorized shares of common stock by 4 billion shares from 1 billion currently. And here's the filing. Let's see some more here. So Dr. Know-It-All says, interesting, it's only a four for one. I wonder if uh, if it would have been higher back when it was worth more. Um, I think it's really a three for one. Yeah, okay, yeah, here, Gary. So this is a, a tweet I did see earlier. Um, I love what Gary says here. He says, Tesla announced a three for one stock split to be approved at the August 4th um, annual uh, why can't I think about this? Uh, it's at the shareholder meeting, essentially. Um, I'm old enough to remember, is what Gary says, what happened in August of 2020 when TSLA announced a five-for-one stock split on August 11th, which became effective on August 31st. During those 20 days, during the 20 days leading up to the actual um, effectiveness of the stock split, the five-for-one, Tesla rose 81%. 80 one percent in 20 days. 
Now, that doesn't mean that the past predicts the future, but hey, it's a very interesting thing to point out, isn't it? Anyways, um, so that's all I really want to cover. Oh, yeah, one more thing. This is, I thought this was hilarious. So, Whole Mars Catalog <laughs> shared this, oh no, with uh, the bull from Wall Street essentially dead, right? But why did he post this? Well, let's take a look at this because this is really what today was about, right? This was D-Day that I had talked about for so long about what would happen with inflation. So let's take a look at this. All right. Consumer Price Index, CPI. For those of you who aren't familiar with what CPI is, essentially think about it as the change of cost of goods for, for consumers, for everyday people, whether it's food, whether it's oil, clothing, just general everything, right? And so essentially, if you aggregate it all, what we saw was um, that all item index increased 8.6% before seasonal adjustments. So we saw an 8.6 reading, like I was telling everybody over the last two days. If we would have seen a, say, 8.2 or lower uh, number here, we probably would have seen the stock market rally. Instead, we saw 8.6. And what happened? Well, the stock market got destroyed. But not everything got destroyed. We'll, we'll come back to that in a second. Right. And we're talking about Tesla, of course. Right. Tesla is what Tesla. You know, let me just skip this real quick. Tesla was beyond impressive today. And I think it's very bullish how well it held up. So stick a little longer. We're going to cover this. But first, we need context before we talk about Tesla stock and the difference in today versus every other day we've seen with Tesla trading compared to the market. So 8.6%. That sucks. That, there's no other way to say it. It's not good. That's really bad. So I highlighted some things that I thought were interesting. Uh, shelter, gasoline, and food being the largest contributors. After declining in April, the energy index rose 3.9% over the month, with, with the gasoline index rising 4.1%. And the other major component index is also increasing. The food index rose 1.2% in May as the food at home index increased 1.4%. Look, this is essentially, essentially telling us gas, fuel, food, these are the costs are going up. Who does that hit? Us, everyday consumers, right? People who aren't making as much money. So, so this becomes a real impact on the economy. So... This is, these are the things that are going to slow down the economy is the fact that this keeps going up. It's not just that it's going up. It's this going up. It's what the Fed's doing, right, or, or lack of what the Fed is doing, right? A lot of people think they're behind. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's just continue analyzing this. The largest 12-month increase since the period ending December in 1981. So this is the largest, 8.6% is the largest increase in inflation in 12 months since 1981. A lot of you weren't even born then. Hell, I wasn't born then, right? This is ridiculous. Less food and energy index, right? So essentially, if you take food out, if you take energy out to see what the rest of it looks like, right? That's what a lot of people have been clinging on to. We still saw 6% over the last 12 months. This is still beyond high. This is still hot, right? So it's not like it's just food and just energy. Yes, those are huge parts of it. And those trickle out into everything else, right? How, how so, Airlines, plane tickets, right? If fuel oil is high, guess what? Airlines pass that on to everybody via ticket prices. So although technically airlines is different than fuel, the fuel still has an effect on it, right? So you'll see this common theme where fuel is kind of like the, 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 the chain or the, the link between every single thing going on here. All right, so, so let's look at some of these numbers. We'll start off with energy here. So Energy commodities up 4.5%. This is month over month, so from April to May. Gasoline, all types, up 4.1%. Fuel oil, 16.9%. That's ridiculously high. Utility pipe gas service, up 8%. This is insane. This is crazy high. This was shocking. Used car and truck prices. Look, February, we saw a decline. March, we saw another decline. April, we saw another decline. We thought we were doing good, right? So negative 0.2%, negative 3.8%, negative 0.4%. And then May, it went up 1.8%, right? These are big numbers. Th these are month over month, not year over year, month over month. These numbers are massive. This was even crazier. Food index increased 1.2% in May following a 0.9% increase the prior month. 
The index for food at home rose 1.4% in May, the fifth consecutive increase of at least 1%. Let me read that again to you. This is what's going to hit everybody at home. Everybody's feeling it. You go to the grocery store, not only do you have to pay more for gas to get there, but then when you get there, you're seeing this crazy increase in food nonstop. So let me read this again. Food at home rose 1.4% in May. That the fifth consecutive increase of at least 1%. Consecutive, 1%. That is wild. This is crazy. Look, if this wasn't, if this wasn't something like we all had to deal with on a day-to-day basis, like this is fascinating. It sucks that we all have to go through this. It sucks that we're all spending money, excess money that we could be using to save or to do other things to better ourselves or on our kids or whatever. Instead, we're wasting it on inflation, essentially. All right, here, here comes the, the big stuff. Energy. The energy index increased 3.9% in May after falling 2.7% in April. So, April, it actually dropped. May, it increased by a lot. The gasoline index rose 4.1% in May after declining in April. All right, hold on to your seats because this is where it gets kind of crazy. The energy index rose 34.6% over the past 12 months. The gasoline index increased 48.7% over the span. The index for fuel oil more than doubled, rising 106.7%. Listen to this. This represents the largest increase in the history of the series, which dates back to 1935. 1935. This is the largest ever. The index for electricity rose 12%, the largest 12-month increase since the period ending August 2006. The index for natural gas increased 30.2% over the past 12 months, the largest such increase since the period ending July 2008. So, Let's take a step back here. We're seeing here the largest ever since 1930, or the largest in history, okay? So the index for fuel oil more than doubled, rising 106.7%. We come back up here, you'll see it right here, 106.7%. Highest ever in history since 1935. Now, that's not just gasoline you're getting your car. This trickles into the entire economy. So take a look at this. The index for airline fares continued to rise, increasing 12.6% in May after rising 18.6% the prior month, April. So we're seeing this trickle through everything, all right? So my, my point in showing this to all of you is that inflation right now is really all tied back to energy, okay? Everything's going back to energy. And for those of you who, who maybe think that that we shouldn't be drilling more or trying to get more oil. Listen, you could argue that the the person doing the most good in the world or the company that's doing the most good in the world, which is Tesla, for, for moving us towards renewable energy, even Elon Musk is saying that we need to drill more. We need more oil right now, right? All of this is very destabilizing. All of this is making everything more expensive, right? The food that you eat at the grocery store or that you get from the grocery store to eat, Why is that getting so much more expensive? Well, guess what? You have to transport everything and that gets more expensive and you have backlogs. And how does, how does, how do you get all that food, all your avocados, your oranges, your, your bananas, everything you get, all the grain that should be coming from Ukraine or Russia? Like, how do you think that gets from point A to point B via ships? What do ships use to, to, to move around? They use fuel oil, right? Like it's all tied together. So as uh, though we're all trying to get to a renewable energy world, we can't just cut it off like that. That was a horrible snap. We can't cut. There we go. That's a good snap. We can't just cut it off like that. The truth is we still need oil, but we don't have enough. All right. We need more oil. And this is the craziest thing. This administration. Look, this isn't political. All right. I'm not left. I'm not right. He, the, this current uh, president. POTUS, he happens to be in office, so that's why I'm directing it towards him. All they would have to do is give real confidence to the oil majors that they're going to be okay, that they're not going to invest into these oil fields, spend all the money, all the R&D, all the research, bringing people back on, getting them healthcare, all the stuff that happens, right, that these companies, they confidence, they can do all these things to ramp up our oil supply, so that we can fix all these issues and bring down inflation by lowering the total amount of oil that's that or the cost of oil by increasing the supply 
if this administration would just give them confidence that they can do that and that's not going to be in two or three years all of a sudden okay we're, well we're done we don't need you anymore let's go back to normal because you know russia ukraine's over and now we're accepting russian oil all over again but if we could get away from that and the and this president would just give confidence to these oil majors we could maybe start to see some meaningful decline in the price of oil but until that happens, this is going to continue to get worse and worse. China's reopening, all right? Shanghai looks like it's reopening. Beijing is essentially reopening. So what does that mean? That means China's going to demand more oil. They're going to use more. They're opening their economy. We're in the summer months. Guess what that means? More people are out there driving. Yeah, sure, oil, uh, gas is 5 or $6 uh, uh, a gallon, but it seems like nobody cares putting things on their credit cards these days. Right. So so that, that's not going to alleviate anything. We need actual results. And the truth is the Fed has no handle on this. The Fed can't just keep raising rates at, to fix a supply issue. Raising rates doesn't fix a supply issue. People are spending regardless. People don't care. People don't mind going to debt. That's what we're learning. That's what we're learning in this economy. So what we need is to get a twofold reaction. The Fed's doing what they're supposed to do. That's all they can do. They're a blunt instrument. They only have so many moves. But now Biden, he needs to go ahead and make a statement. He needs to come out. Maybe you reopen the Keystone Pipeline. Maybe you, you go ahead and talk to the oil majors and give them confidence to go ahead and make these investments. The point is, until we get energy under control, until energy starts to come down, until we get more supply, we are going to be in this world of pain. And the only other move that there is, if Biden doesn't do something, is for the Fed to send the economy into a deep recession. And in my opinion, and I've talked about this since February, I know I'm a broken record on this, I am convinced more than ever that we are in a recession right now. We are in the recession. There's no doubt about it. Now, we'll see what happens in August when the numbers come out, but I'm convinced that we are in a recession. Now, with that said, with the fact that we might be in a recession, with the fact that Biden probably isn't going to do anything to help himself, his party, or, or anything, right, with, with regards to oil. And, you know, I, I'll give the guy a break. Like, he's in a, he's in a tough spot, right? You are the party that is essentially anti-oil, which is kind of ironic because you're also the party that's for unions that are making all the ICE vehicles that, are, that run on oil. I mean, it's just Everything's hypocrisy when it comes to politics, left, right, middle. It's all hypocritical. But my point is Biden is probably not going to do anything. So that means the Fed has to do something. So the Fed is probably going to raise to 75 basis point, maybe not in June, but maybe in July. There's definitely going to be another rate hike in September. You can guarantee that. So my point, Tesla, let's talk Tesla. In this environment, they're better than Apple. I'm convinced now. I was just talking to my best friend about two hours ago. I'm convinced Tesla is now the only stock worth being in, period, right? I'm all in on Tesla, so I'm biased, right? Putting this out there, and none of this is financial advice. But with that said, Tesla is the only company worth being in. They have no debt. They are printing money over and over like crazy, right? They are, they are just essentially flooding themselves with money, right? Because they have such great operational efficiency, because they're so vertically integrated, because they have crazy margins. And on top of that, they also have crazy demand. They have the highest backlog order that they've ever had. And as oil gets more and more expensive, as gasoline goes from five to six, to seven, maybe $10 a gallon in California, guess what? People are going to opt more and more to go with an EV, with a Tesla. At the end of the day, you're going to be spending five to $10,000 a year alone on fuel oil, or you can go get an EV. And guess what? Who's making the EVs out there? Well, really only Tesla, especially in the US, right? The numbers don't lie. So that's where we are right now. To me, Tesla is the only real company to invest in if you actually want to have real growth in this entire environment. Now, look, eventually this will all end. It, it, it will, right? It always does. It, it comes to an end. But Tesla right now is actually holding up really strong. Tesla is normally a beta two stock. In other words, whenever the NASDAQ goes down, let's say 2%, that means Tesla's normally down 4%. If NASDAQ is up 2%, normally Tesla's up 4%. So if we look at what the NASDAQ did today, the NASDAQ was down, it was down about 3.5%. Whereas Tesla, if we look at Tesla, Tesla was only down 3.12%, right? In reality, Tesla should have been down about 6, 6.5%, but they weren't. This is 
bullish. This is very, very good news. This means, this means that people are fleeing to Tesla or they're deciding to hold on Tesla because they don't see anything better out there. Real estate's not better. Other stocks aren't better. Bonds aren't better. Where are you going to put your money? Gold, Bitcoin, guess what? They're not doing great either. Tesla is the only thing that has a good pipeline moving forward over the next six months. Whether you're talking about the stocks, but they just announced today, whether you're talking about AI day, whether you're talking about Q3 and Q4 numbers that will be nutty, especially with Berlin and Austin ramping up, all this rumor about 4680 battery, FSD is doing better than ever. The point is, Tesla today in this D-Day event that we had has done remarkable beyond what you could have imagined, right? Bravo to everybody out there that held, bravo out there to Tesla in general, right? This was monumental in my opinion. I think that this is potentially the start of a real recovery for us amidst all of this craziness going on. Now, it doesn't mean that it's all over and volatility is over, no. It's probably gonna get a lot worse from here, right? We're gonna have violent days, but the fact that amidst this really bad news, Tesla held up so strong, is worth being optimistic about. Yes, we're down 3% today. Yes, we're under $700. But hey, we have a stock split coming. And hey, Giga Shanghai is back open. And hey, we have AI Day coming in. Oh, and hey, guess what? This Q, this Q2 this Q is going to be a nothing burger. It's all kind of baked in. Oh, and yeah, don't forget Berlin, Austin are still ramping up. And the 40C, right? You can go on and on. Name another company you can go on like this. Name another company you can get this excited about. I'm very bullish. I'm really excited, even though we're down 3% today. Look, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this kind of puts everything in perspective for you, or at least shows you my perspective. We're going to leave it there for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do me a favor. If you like this type of content, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell. You can subscribe to our Patreon down below. I have the link in the description. You can also find a link to our merchandise store there. All right, we're going to leave it there. I might make another video this weekend. We'll see. I have a lot of thoughts going on in my head, and sometimes I just need to get it out, and I want to share it with all of you. So keep an eye out for this weekend. There'll probably be some videos. All right, like I said, we're going to leave it there. I love you all. Peace.